In our last episode, we finally met Renesco and got everything we needed from him. The mine parts to repair the air purifier in the uranium mine at Broken Hills, and we used our reputation with the Salvatore family to muscle him into selling us his entire shop inventory for one dollar. Now we need to return to Mr. Salvatore to tell him the good news. But while we were over here on the west side of town, we decided to explore the other buildings. We found the chapel where we met Father Tully and optionally got rid of some excess baggage. And now we can head out of the church to see what else is here. Just south of the church, we find a ruin filled with a bunch of skags, but no loot or anything else of interest. Crossing the street, we find New Reno Arms. This is the weapon shop of New Reno, and inside we find the proprietor, Eldridge. Welcome, Mr. Eldridge is the name. You in the market for some iron to fill that holster of yours? Depends on what you're selling, we can say. Here at New Reno Arms, we have the latest personal protection devices needed to stop any yellow-bellied son of a gun dead in his tracks. And he smiles evilly. Well, I don't know if you can help me then, we can say, because I'm looking for something special. Oh, he says, we got us a discriminating customer, eh? Well, at times, some prize pieces do make their way through town. Take this, for example. He holds up something odd. Genuine pre-war tech. Isn't it something? Uh, it's something, all right. Can I take a look? We see that it's a complex circuit board. A memory chip is set into it, and a number of computer connections are on the side, including an input and output. Printed on the board is Voltec Voice Recognition Module. Voltec, we can say? This has to be important. How much? 3,000 bucks, says Eldridge. Uh, that's a little steep. How about 1,500, we can say? And he repeats himself. So if we want it, we can say, sure. He smiles, rubs his hands as we lay the money on the table. All right, he says, here you go. Anything else? Anything else? Inspecting it in our inventory, we see that we've purchased a computer voice module, a circuit board with several unidentifiable parts, a microphone, and an inscription that reads, vault Voice Recognition Module. It weighs one pound. At the moment, we have no idea why we would want this. But regardless, we don't need to buy one. We already have one. We picked one up while exploring Vault 8. We found it just lying around. So there's no need to buy this from Eldritch, especially for that price. Hey Eldritch, Jules told me to come here while I was looking for weapons. Jules sent you my way, huh, he says. About time that lazy jerk did his job. So what can I do for you, mister? Do the Salvatores buy their Lightbringers here, we can ask? And he blinks in surprise, then laughs. Ha! No, no! Those weapons are something else, ain't they? Sure would like to get my hands on one, though. Check out the range, power, fire rate. He stares into the distance and sighs. What if I offered to get you one, we can say? And he squints at us, as if deciding whether he can trust us. I wouldn't say no, he says. If you did it quiet-like, I'd pay you for your trouble. But then he frowns. Assuming you don't cause any. We can tell him that we'll bring him one back. And by this time, we should have picked up at least one laser pistol. Cassidy was carrying one for me. So snagging it, we can head back and say, I brought you that laser pistol I promised. Well, hell then, he says. True to my word, here's something for your trouble. He gives us 1,500 chips and we earn 500 experience. Damn, strange looking thing, isn't it? He examines the barrel. Hmm. Hey, Eldritch, can you modify or upgrade weapons? Sure as hell can, he says. What you need souped up. And like Skeeter in Gecko, Eldritch can upgrade weapons. He can increase the damage of the cattle prod, expand the magazine of the Desert Eagle, reduce the reload speed of the 44 Magnum revolver, increase the long-range accuracy of the hunting rifle, increase the magazine capacity of the AK-112 assault rifle, and increase the nighttime accuracy of the FNFAL. We can then ask him what he has in stock, and he has one of the best inventories we've seen in the game so far. He sells a wide range of early to mid-game armor, explosives, a variety of ammunition types, 
And a new gun that we haven't seen yet, the M3A1 Grease Gun SMG. He doesn't have any money to barter with, but his desirable inventory makes him a great resource for disposing of unwanted junk. I went ahead and bought the Grease Gun. This submachine gun filled National Guard arsenals after the Army replaced it with newer weapons. However, the Grease Gun was simple and cheap to manufacture, so there are still quite a few still in use. Minimum Strength 4, it uses 45 caliber ammunition and weighs 10 pounds. If we try to walk behind his gate, he'll turn hostile if he catches us. However, if we manage to sneak by him, we can explore behind the fence. This front area, directly on the other side of the fence, has nothing inside. We see a bunch of shelves covered in junk, but we can't inspect any of them or open them. However, we do find a door leading into a room in the back. And as soon as we enter, a bunch of dogs start barking. Shut up, ya yappin' mutts, says Eldritch. We see a dresser to the right. Inside, we can loot a 44 caliber pistol, some ammunition, leather armor, and some money. Moving left, we see that there are three dogs. They're barking real loud, but they're not hostile. We find a footlocker on the ground. Inside, we find a very rare 9mm Mauser pistol with the appropriate ammunition. This is the only one in Fallout 2, aside from one we can find in a special encounter. It only does between 5 to 10 damage, but it grants plus 20% to hit chance because it has the weapon accurate weapon perk. We see two shelves against the northern wall, one we can't access. The game says we can't get there, but we can loot the other one. Inside we find some booze, jerky, a dusty box, some noodles, fruit, and a knife. I tried taking the jerky out and giving it to the dog, hoping that he would move, but that didn't work. We'll have to figure out how to loot this shelf in a minute. Moving left, we can walk into the workshop. Exploring the first shelf to the right, we find some flares, rope, and a crowbar. Then exploring the workbench, we find a mallet, some rot cut, a knife, a copy of Dean's Electronics, and some junk. In the final bookshelf, we find some dynamite, a lighter, and some shotgun shells. Against the western wall, we find a door. It's locked, but we can easily pick it. This is one way to get in and out without turning Eldritch hostile. In fact, now that we're back here and he's looking at the gate, it's nigh impossible even when sneaking to get out the front door. So this door is the way we're gonna have to leave. Heading back into the room with the dogs, I couldn't find any way to move this guy, so I had to attack him. Upon killing the first dog, the other two attack. But thankfully, Eldritch doesn't come running. With the dogs dead, we can loot the shelf. Inside, we find a shotgun, some shotgun shells, a copy of Guns and Bullets, and a holotape. The NCR History Holodisc. It reads like so. NCR History Holodisc. New California Republic Information Disc 1. We're here! Why not join us? There's a wonderful future ahead, and it could be yours with the New California Republic. But what is it you want to know? How big is NCR? Founded 80 years ago, the NCR is now comprised of the states of Shady, Los Angeles, Maxon, Hub, and Deglo. Approximately 700,000 citizens are pleased to call NCR home. What does NCR stand for? The New California Republic is dedicated to bringing peace, security, and justice to the people of the Great West. NCR's fine police forces constantly patrol and arrest any raiders, cannibals, slavers, and lawless mutants within the country. And the NCR army valiantly protects the borders against outside marauders. To ensure justice and liberty, all citizens have access to NCR's courts and a right to vote for a representative of their choice to sit in the Hall of Congress. In the words of President Tandy, a safe people is a strong people. Wait a minute, comprises the states of Shady, it has a President Tandy? The Vault Dweller would recognize those two names. Tandy was the young girl from Shady Sands whom he rescued. Could this be the same Tandy? But she would be an old, old woman by now. Who's in charge here? NCR may be a bit different from what you're used to. There are no chieftains, town bosses, kings, or dictators here. Our leaders are elected by the people. That's right. Every state has the right to send representatives to the Hall of Congress. These representatives select the president and vice president to head the council, and it is their advice that guides the president's decisions. 
For 10 terms now, President Tandy has been the unanimous choice of the council, who respect her wisdom and foresight. Sounds great! How do I join the NCR? All law-abiding and peaceful people, human or mutant, are eligible to become citizens of NCR. To become a citizen, all you have to do is move to NCR and present your claim for immigration. After citizenship training and processing your application, you will be notified of your new status as a PC, Provisional Citizen. From there, it's only a short step to full citizenship. Of course, NCR is not for everybody. Slavers, unreformed mutants, known raiders, and other undesirables need not apply. But what if my entire town wants to join? Depending on where your town is located, NCR does accept petitions by villages, towns, bases, city-states, even minor kingdoms for annexation by NCR. Once the petition is accepted, NCR will grant your town territorial status. Once the needed police and army presence is established and any banditry or other lawlessness has been dealt with, your village can apply for full statehood in the NCR. It's that simple! So remember, we're here. Why not join us? prepared by the New California Relations Advisory Panel. This page was intentionally left blank. Oh dear, so the NCR is a bit of a bureaucracy. Still, sounds miles better than what the Wasteland has now. I'm looking forward to visiting them. As we're about to leave, we discover a staircase behind the bookshelf next to Eldritch's bed. Heading down the stairs, we discover a basement and a man walking around. Blam, he says. The slack-jawed young man looks at you with a toothless smile. Stitched on his shirt is a small tag that says Algernon in cursive letters. Boom, he says. When he sees our weapons, he starts pointing at them excitedly. Boom. Uh, says the chosen one, do you want to see one of these weapons? We can give him one of our pistols and then choose the 44 Magnum. Algernon takes the item and his eyes light up. He tinkers with it for a few minutes, then a few minutes more, then a few more, and an hour later, Algernon hands it back to us with a nod and an evil smile. Boom. So Algernon can upgrade our weapons for free. Indeed, it's likely Algernon, whom Eldritch uses to upgrade the weapons we give to him. But Algernon can upgrade a greater selection of weapons than Eldritch can. He can increase the damage of the Cattle Prod, increase the damage of the Big Frigger Power Fist, increase the penetration of the Laser Pistol, increase the battery capacity of the Plasma Pistol by 16, increase the magazine capacity of the Desert Eagle by 12, improve the reload speed by half of the 44 Magnum Revolver, increase the long-range accuracy of the Hunting Rifle, increase the magazine of the Assault Rifle by 76, increase the nighttime accuracy of the FNFAL, increase the magazine capacity of the laser rifle by 12, increase the damage of the plasma rifle, upgrade the flamer, which increases its damage by five, and improve flamethrower fuel, which also increases its damage. Algernon here is the only person in the entire game who can upgrade the flamer. Algernon is a reference to the science fiction novel Flowers for Algernon. The story is about a 32-year-old man named Charlie Gordon who has an IQ of 68. He hates the thought of being doomed to a life of menial labor inside a bakery, and so he works hard to improve himself. Two doctors had recently successfully performed a surgery on a mouse named Algernon that increased its mental performance, and so Charlie volunteered himself as a human test subject to undergo the IQ-increasing procedure. Hence why the Algernon in the Fallout universe that we find here is monosyllabic. However, it's important that we not talk to Al with a low-intelligence character. If we do, upon speaking with him, we find an option to talk like him. He says, boom. We say, boom. Algernon says, Horn. <laughs> he gives a gurgling laugh, then points his finger at us like a gun. Blam, blam, he says. Miss me, miss me, says the chosen one. Take this. We point our finger at him like a pistol. Pow, pow. Algernon gets a shocked expression on his face, then looks slowly at the place where we shot him. He suddenly staggers, then his eyes roll up into his head, and he falls over dead. Uh, Al, you okay, we can say? He doesn't move, and we can start clapping. 
but he doesn't get up. He isn't breathing either. Oh, says the chosen one. Me kill Al. Me better get out of here, we can say. And we find Al lying dead. One more reason not to have a low intelligence character. After upgrading all of our weapons with Al, we can explore this basement. We find a number of piles of junk all over the floor. In the northwestern corner, we find a stack of small energy cells. Then in the far northwestern corner, we find a refrigerator. Inside the refrigerator, we find an electronic lockpick, two pulse grenades, and a stack of energy cells. We can use this electronic lockpick to unlock the door in the toxic caves, which I covered in my video on Klamath that you can watch here. In the southwestern section of the room, we find three tables. In the first, we find a hunting rifle with some ammunition, a pipe pistol, a spanner, a crowbar, and a mallet. In the second table, we find a lighter, a coil of rope, some dynamite, and a knife. And in the third table, we find a Geiger counter, a radio, some junk, and a tool. We see a howitzer down here. Our Pip-Boy says that this strange-looking cannon looks like a relic from the pre-war days. We wonder how it ended up here. Then, moving due south, against the southern wall, we find a dresser and inside some leather armor and more rubber boots. Again, useful for the toxic caves. Then, in the southeastern corner, we find a bookshelf with some microfusion cells, a dusty box, some Blamco mac and cheese, and a technical manual. Even though the technical manual says that it's regarding a suit of T-51B power armor, it serves no purpose in the game. As we're about to leave, we spy the edge of a pot hiding behind a stack of boxes. If we select it carefully, inside the pot we find an Easter egg. This is a hard-boiled chicken egg painted with colored dyes. <laughs> well, we found an Easter egg. It has no other purpose in the game. Chris Avalon, one of the developers, once said that it was supposed to hatch a recruitable NPC companion named The Chicken, but that was eventually cut from the game. When done, we can leave the basement and head out the side door of New Reno Arms. There is a big ruined building just north of New Reno Arms. It's destroyed and has a bunch of skags walking around, but there's nothing here. And that's it for the west side of New Reno. Now that we've explored the west side of town, we can take the mine parts back to Broken Hills. Heading into the mine office, we can talk with Zayus. You've got the parts, he says. Great! I hope you've got some protective gear. The fumes can take you down. I'm ready to go, we can say. And he says, please hurry. The mine is our town's lifeblood. Heading inside the mine, we visited it earlier when I did my video on Broken Hills that you can watch here. But now that we have the mine parts, we can head to the northeastern corner and use the parts to fix the mine. The purifier whirs to life. We repair it and gain 1,500 experience. Then, heading outside the mine, we can check in again with Zayus. You fixed it, he says. Excellent. As agreed, here's the remainder of what we owe you. Thank you again. And he gives us the rest of our negotiated fee. Now that we've repaired the mine, Marcus will join our party. Something else you wanted? You want to travel with me? You want me to come along with you? Ah, what the hell. I'm too old to settle down. We going now? And with that, Marcus becomes a companion. Marcus is a decent companion. One drawback is because of his size, he can't wear armor. He does come with built-in natural resistances, but even at max level, these resistances equate to wearing combat armor. And he joins our party with a minigun set to burst damage. So in combat, he can quite frequently kill our other companions or even ourselves. It may be better to equip him with a turbo plasma rifle if we have one. While we're in Broken Hills, we can take care of a few things we missed last time. We find a jail to the right over here, and inside, a drunken super mutant sleeping in one of the cells. Why do I always wake up in jail, he says. Man, another night in the drunk tank. Marcus must be pissed that I keep getting drunk like this. You got any booze? Hair of the dog and all that? Geez, one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer, and suddenly I'm in jail. I think I'm gonna puke. 
Oh, my aching head. Shh, please, shh. Don't show me food, don't show me food. This poor guy, described by our Pip-Boy as a bleary-eyed mutant, has a role to play later in the game. Then, heading back to the lab of the professor, remember we played chess with his pet scorpion, and after beating him, the scorpion became so enraged that he attacked us, and we were forced to kill him. But what I forgot to do at that time was to loot his body. On the scorpion's body, we find a pair of spectacles. A set of spectacles for eye correction. Because, of course, intelligent, talking, chess-playing scorpions have got to wear spectacles. We'll take these back with us to New Reno, where they will play a role. Then, before leaving, we can head down to the caravan office to talk with Bill the Outfitter. We accepted his job to shovel crap for a while for a hundred bucks in my video on Broken Hills, but one thing I missed is that if we do it enough times, we become an expert excrement expediter, and we earn 500 experience. Taking a look at our perks, we find a brand new perk, expert excrement expediter. You can sling bull with the best of them. This perk grants plus 5% to our speech skill, but we lose a little bit of reputation in Broken Hills. I guess the townsfolk think that we just stink too much. Now on my way back to New Reno, I stumbled upon a random encounter. We were assaulted by ruffians led by a Morton brother. You killed my brother, now I kill you, he shouts. Now we recall, while exploring Redding, that the sheriff of Redding had us kill a nearby bandit named Frog Morton. We had to kill him in order to clear the Wanamingo Mine. It was only after killing Frog Morton that the sheriff told us that he had a bunch of brothers who might seek us out for revenge. At the time I told you I'd share with you whenever I get those random encounters, well, here's the first one. There are three brothers in total, Toad, Newt, and Snake. This was Toad Morton, and it was a pretty tough fight. I used a number of stim packs, but at last, I killed them. The thugs wield decent mid to late game weaponry, including a flamer. Back in New Reno, if we take Marcus to the cat's paw, we find an option while talking with Miss Kitty to say, you got anyone who can uh, handle Marcus? And because Marcus is a super mutant, he's one of the more expensive ones. To accommodate our friend costs 703 chips. If we agree, the screen fades to black and Marcus appears in one of the rooms. He says, I sure hope I didn't get her pregnant. But strangely enough, his text bubble was where he was standing, not where he appeared. Then the rest of our party members all shout, Wahoo! And way to go! But that was a strange thing for a super mutant to say, talking with Marcus about this. What do you want? Uh, when you said, I hope she doesn't get pregnant in the cat's paw in New Reno, what did you mean? Didn't your folks explain this to you? No, I mean, I thought all you mutants were sterile. What? Where did you hear that? So, you aren't sterile? Nope. Well, not now. It takes a few years after being dipped to get the juices flowing again. Why? This shocking revelation, if true, means that if the Vault Dweller convinced the Master to commit suicide by telling him that all super mutants were sterile, as we learned from the Lieutenant, he did so prematurely. All the Master would have had to do to still follow through with his plan is wait a few years. Of course, Marcus could be lying or even joking. And in fact, we learned that he was. Chris Avalon, one of the developers and the guy who wrote this dialogue, said later that Marcus was joking here. So despite this, super mutants are indeed sterile. Next, we can pay our good pal Renesco a visit. He seemed to love our company so much last time. Though this time, and with the spectacles we got off of the rad scorpion in our inventory, we find an option to say, hey, I have a pair of glasses if you want them. Renesco snatches the glasses from us and puts them on. His eyes widen. Sweet Reno, that's what this damn shop looks like? And then he frowns. What a mess. And what is that on the shelves? Looks like Brahmin crap. You're welcome, we can say. And he says, I, hmm, uh, where did you get these things? 
Well, we can say, there was this tiny rad scorpion, see, and there was this scientist that was training him, and you know what? Even I don't believe it. Just keep them, all right? And he says, well, I... I'm, uh, grateful. I thought I was gonna have to suffer with those broken frames for the rest of my life. If I can do something for you, you, uh, let me know, and, uh, I'll think about it. We have a couple of options here. We can say, how about a discount? Uh, come on, just a little discount. Come on. Err, come on. Well, come on. Okay, okay, I'll give you a discount. Perf. And we get a nice little discount at Renesco's pharmacy. The other option is to say, Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But until that day, accept these glasses as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. This, of course, is a famous quote from The Godfather. Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. The next time we see him, we can say, how's the glasses? And he folds his arms. Adequate. If you are expecting some handout for being a good Samaritan, you are gravely mistaken. Now, what do you want? If we ask him how the glasses are over and over and over again, about 20 times, finally he says, Doggone, whatever Deathclaw or marketing director spawned you! You want something? Here, here, take this. Take all I have. Anything to get you to leave me alone. And he throws something at us. What the hell is this, the chosen one says. Inspecting our inventory, we find a Pip-Boy medical enhancer. This Pip-Boy medical enhancer consists of a strange hollow disc, microfilament card, headgear, and an optical sensor that is placed over the user's left eye. When used, an optical flash transmits a dictionary of physician skills and know-how into the user's memory, permanently improving the user's doctor skill. It weighs zero pounds. Then, using it in our inventory, it disappears. And the chosen one says, whoa, the doctor is in. Checking out our doctor skill, sure enough, we see that it has improved our doctor skill by 10%. And hopefully that's the last time we have to enjoy the pleasant company of Renesco. With Broken Hills safe, we can finally return to Mr. Salvatore to hand over the money we were supposed to get from Renesco. Heading to the top floor, Mason says, go see Mr. Salvatore. He is waiting for you. Heading inside, have you done as I asked, he says. Yes, Mr. Salvatore. I have the tribute you asked me to collect. Very well. And he waits. We recall that the tribute was supposed to be a thousand chips. And if we try to short him, he will turn hostile. So to stay on his good side, we'll give him a thousand chips. Salvatore nods as we give him the money. You have done adequately. You have earned 10% of the cut. Only 10% this time, but we have to say thank you, Mr. Salvatore. Now, if we made any mistakes while talking with Mr. Salvatore up to this point, he next takes a breath from his mask and says, you have done as I asked. I have no further need of your services. He points to the exit. Leave now. Uh, okay, we can say. And that's it. Any further communication from this point on with Mr. Salvatore will turn him hostile. However, if we responded to Mr. Salvatore correctly each time, we never asked about the Lightbringers and we were always polite, then we earned enough reputation points for him to offer us 25% of the cut. And then, after taking a deep breath from the mask, he says, I have another matter that I could use your assistance with. I am interested in the job, Mr. Salvatore. What do you want me to do? A sensitive transaction will be taking place soon. I am in need of an extra 
guard to ensure that the transaction goes smoothly. You will speak to Mason and do as he directs you. Now, finally, after receiving this quest, we can at last ask, can I have one of those laser weapons you use? Yes, he says. This time, yes, but you will carry other armaments as well. Talk to Mason about the details. He will give you one of the Lightbringers. Yes, Mr. Salvatore, we can say. And we don't suffer a penalty for asking for them. Talking with Mason. All right, he says. The boss says you're coming along on a little transaction we're doing. Make sure you come armed. Don't bring no pea shooters. Then come back and talk to me. Mr. Salvatore said you were to give me a laser pistol. And he says, yeah, that's the word. Here you go. Don't be playing with it, neither. You hurt anyone with that thing, and I'll shoot you dead. Can you teach me how to use it, we can ask? The screen fades to black, and he grunts. Doggone it. Look, first off, hold it like this. He adjusts our grip. Now, the loading chamber is here. After an hour and some practice, Mason has improved our skill with energy weapons. So why do I need something other than this, we can ask? These pistols seem pretty powerful. And he says, why is it you gotta question everything I say? Look, the other party of this transaction ain't gonna be hurt by these Lightbringers, okay? So make sure you have something else with you. In this way, he's suggesting that we bring some ballistic weapons with us, not energy weapons. If we need to go get some, we can say, I need a little more time, then I'll be back. Make sure you hurry up. We only got a 24-hour window before the deal's off. You miss it, and I'll make sure you rot in Golgotha. Don't worry, Mason, we can say. I'll be there. Then, after collecting our weapons... And making sure we have enough ammunition, we can again talk with Mason. But if we take too long, he says, I've been itching to kill you for a long time. I warned you what would happen if you were late. Well, pardon me for not having a watch, we can say. And he turns hostile. So making sure that we arrive on time, we can say, let's do it. Let's go then, he says. And we can follow him and the other Salvatores into the desert. We arrive on a desert plain outside of New Reno. The other Salvatores say, these guys give me the creeps. Shut up, here they come, says the other. Then, walking forward from a vertebrate, come two heavily armored soldiers. We haven't seen anything like these guys except for, wait a minute. Enclave here, why isn't your video feed working? We saw someone who looked just like these guys on the other side of that video screen inside the Gecko Power Plant. And he identified himself as Enclave? Are these more members of this Enclave? Do you have the cargo we requested? Yes, the chemicals are all here. You can check them if you like. That will not be necessary. You know what will happen if the chemicals do not meet the specifications we requested. Right, of course. Uh, and you brought the Lightbringers? The laser weapons are in our cargo bay. To ensure your cooperation, we will transmit the arming sequence for them once the chemicals are loaded. Uh, well, all right then. Load her up, boys. No. We will load the cargo. And a Mr. Handy steps forward. Uh, right, right, of course. Give him room, boys. And after a while... All right, we're good here. The rest of you guards head back to Reno. We'll meet up with you. So the Salvatores got their light bringers from this enclave, and they were trading chemicals for them. But what kind of chemicals could they be? Biological weapons? Now we have a choice. Do we follow the guards back to New Reno? Or do we seize upon this opportunity to get ourselves this fancy metal armor these Enclave guys are wearing? They do look pretty intimidating. And we don't want to anger Mr. Salvatore, so 
I suppose we'll wait to meet these guys in battle on another day. With that, we appear back in New Reno in the middle of Virgin Street. Heading back to Salvatore's bar, we can head upstairs. Glad you finally made it back. The boss wants to see you, says Mason. Heading inside. Sit, Oxhorn. You have done all I have asked. I would like you to join the Salvatore family and become one of my maid men. At last, we can become a made man of New Reno. If we reject his offer here by saying, I would be honored, Mr. Salvatore, but I cannot. I have other duties to another family, notably my mother. He says, that is unfortunate. I cannot take the risk that you will remain silent about what you have seen in the desert. Goodbye, Oxhorn. Whoa, wait a minute, we can say. Guards. <laughs> Guards, says Salvatore, and Mason and the family turn hostile. So if we don't want to become a made man of the Salvatores, after meeting the Enclave in the desert, we should not return to Salvatore. If we do, our only option to continue without becoming hostile to the Salvatore clan is to say, I would be honored, Mr. Salvatore. Very well, you must choose a name. Oh, great, another long list of names. So what will our made man name be? It could be Whisper, Spider, Measle, Teacher, Mover, Bull, Skipper, Shush, Lefty, Righty, Eyebrows, Tornado, Multi, Monkey Boy, Lumpy, Mitt, Gooch, ugh, Meat Cleaver, Bracho, Two Times, Romeo, Vinny, Rook, Silencer, Hammer, Knuckles, Bender, Gracer, Snake Eyes, Wolf, Hatchet Man, Smiley, Fats, Pearl, Reno Jimmy, Jade Scarface, Diamond Ace, One-Eyed Jack, Nikki, Iceman, Sly, Slick, Charlie, Opium, Dagger, Angel Eyes, Fixer, Shark, Hound, Reverend, Magnum, Iceberg, Gina, Vicky, Chase, Guillotine, Frost, Valentina, Coffin Maker, Little Joe, Ice Queen Switch, Box, Chips, Lucky, Saint, Numbers, Mantis, Scorpio, Fat Man, Sam, Blue Lou, Tommy the Gun, Crazy Jane, Widow, Trash Man, Nine Inch Nick, Rainmaker, King, Killer, Santana, Joey, Caesar, or Kaisar, Mickey, Drifter, Killer, Butcher, Red, Ruby, or X. Oh, God. Well, we'll pick, um, how about Gina for kicks and giggles? And he nods. That is a good name. Now go speak to Mason. He will have something for you. Thank you, Mr. Salvatore. Speaking to Mason, he grunts. Hey there, Gina. Mr. Salvatore sent word of your promotion. Congrats. I got some stuff for you. Let's see. He hands us an armload of items. Careful with that stuff. We can take the items. The armload of items could be a laser pistol with 50 bucks, or some metal armor with 150 bucks, or some metal armor mark two and 300 bucks, depending on how much Mason likes us. So it's good not to have insulted him while working with him. Also, he says, we Salvatores, we got a special understanding with Miss Kitty down at the Cat's Paw, and Eldridge over at the Weapon Store, and at Renesco's. He winks, have fun, and at last, as a made man, we can finally get away with mocking Mason. Gee, Mason, thanks. Except next time, why don't you call me Sir? I'd like that. <laughs> And strangely enough, the next time we talk to him, hello, sir, he says. <laughs> as a made man, we can push Mason around. And as a made man, we can have sex with the prostitutes at the Cat's Paw for free. And we get a discount at both Renesco's Pharmacy and New Reno Arms. People all around town treat us with respect, too. Heading to the Golden Globes, the Corsican brothers recognize us. Holy, hey, how you doing, Gina? How's Boss Salvatore? 
Have a seat. So, um, what can I do for ya? And just like if we became a prize fighter, as a made man, we can become a porn star. The downside is by becoming a made man with one family, all other families in Nurino turn hostile, locking us out of all of their quests, forcing us to kill them all or be killed upon entering their areas of town. We've only covered two families in New Reno. There are two left to go. So going back a bit, before becoming a made man of the Salvatores, we'll move on to a new family. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.